Thanks, Joe, and thanks for uh, organizing this. I'd like to thank the whole group, Volume Interactions and, uh, and Branco, for putting this together and for inviting me out this evening. See a lot of familiar faces, real international crowd. I want to talk a little bit about uh, <clears throat> a case uh, that would exemplify what I think uh, this dextroscope can do in terms of using routine images that we uh, use in every day and see what we can see from them. And I'll get right into it because this is one of the things that got me excited about the dextroscope. Uh, this is a, um, <coughs> we'll start, this is a 19 year old college student who presents to the uh, emergency room with a terrible headache. He gets a CT scan um, and uh, then goes for a stealth MRI uh, en route to the operating room. I should just preface by saying when we see the MR that I trained in the 1980s in Montreal. We didn't have MR at the Montreal General Hospital and we would have done this case only with a CT scan and I trained mostly with CT only emerging into the MR era. So I've sort of graduated with this technology over time as well. Now this is a simple plus or plus gadolinium contrast MR uh, in which we see an intraventricular uh, tumor. Now normally again we would just see three you know coronal axial and uh, sagittal planes. This would go into the stealth station and the patient would under be brought for surgery. And I just wanted to show you what you can see with a normal plus image uh, in this system. What this system can potentially do with it that we are not seeing now with our normal stealth stations or with the imaging that we are getting in our hospital with this type of image. So you can see you start off with the, um, as you've seen in the other two cases, axial, coronal, and sagittal, and you can manipulate this and look and see where the tumor is. Um, I do a lot of functional, a lot of epilepsy work um, at Penn. So a lot of the work that I do actually focuses on surgery of the brain. It's not a vessel under the brain or taking out a piece of the skull base. We're actually looking at this plastic cortical tissues, uh, removing pieces of brain. But I wanted to show a case which involved sort of the brain itself, but was a case that I thought that a um, uh, neurosurgeon in practice, whether in private or in academic practice in this country, would see. There was a question about segmentation before. Definitely the way you segment the tumor has a huge bearing on, um, you know, clinically what you're going to see clinically if you do good or poor segmentations. I think one of the things that's vastly improved this system over previous virtual reality systems, including this one, is that the um, incredible speed of the graphics processors at this point allow you to manipulate these images very quickly. There used to be a tremendous amount of stutter in the motion when you'd process and move this. Now you can actually move these images very fluidly and look at the tumor. Here you can see the relationship of the, um, the tumor to the ventricles and then he'll put the vessels on afterwards. And again, this is not an MRA. He can abstract the vessels from a routine plus, including veins and arteries. And there you can see the, um, <clears throat> the arteries, and then he will do the veins. So you can start getting an idea of the relationship of this tumor uh, to the vessels. Could you abstract all of this um, looking at a plain MRI? I think you could. I think, though, as neurosurgeons, as we move on, we're getting more and more complex imaging to look at different modalities of imaging and it's become more and more difficult for us to process this all in 3D in our own minds. I think this is taking a mental step which we naturally do ourselves and it's bringing it in so we can actually see it visualized um, in sort of this type of intuitive interface. Now Ralph, why don't you go up and show the surface and we'll show the, uh, the cortex. I think this system has a very, very nice algorithm you saw before for uh, rendering cortical surface. One of the big challenges of all these um, algorithms is stripping surface so you can see cerebral cortex. And here you can see, again, a simple plus where you can see the gyri and sulci very, very well delineated, as well as you can see some of the major um, draining veins. This could be important if you were planning either a, you know, a, a transcolossal case or you're thinking how you would go transcortically. Um, at this tumor, knowing where the veins are, you can see them exquisitely well in their relationship on both sides, right and left. And you can also get an idea of um, what the cortex looks like very nicely. If he goes to the surface, you can actually, I think, see the surface rendering very similar to the surface rendering that you see with a um, 
with stealth imaging in which you'll see the, uh, the fiducials right at the surface, but here you really get a, a beautiful, beautiful cortical rendering that can really guide exactly which uh, gyrus um, you're going through if you're going, again, transcortical or if you're going to go transcolosal. In summary, I think you can see that just using routine imaging, um, you can get some really, really nice 3D perspectives with a view of vessels, view of tumor, view of cortex, view of surface. Um, and it can be really, really nice for planning. I think it's a, a terrific instrument if you want to do um, education. We talk about resonance, but now um, it can also be fantastic for patient education. An increasingly informed audience in this country wants to see exactly what's going to be done to them, not necessarily only on plastic models. Some of them want to really interact. Um, and, and this is, can be a really a, a tremendous opportunity for the patient actually start looking and seeing what you are actually going to uh, do in terms of modeling um, their surgery. I'll stop right there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Baltuk. Do we have any questions for Dr. Baltuk as we load the next case? We have just a few more cases to show you. Anyone? No? Thank you very much, Dr. Pleasure. Baltuk. Appreciate it.